So last year, I delivered a TED talk on how to maintain your happiness when everything else is dragging you down. And I discussed how I'd managed to keep on top of everything and battle through each pain that came and faced me. For me, the main point was distractions, such as sport, drama, being around friends, and just engaging myself on a day-to-day -day basis. With the pandemic, all of that was taken away from me. I couldn't play hockey, I couldn't do any other sports such as football, I couldn't see my friends, I couldn't have events, I couldn't go to a music festival. And while some of you are lucky to rely on that strength of your family and that sort of homely love, I couldn't. And I deteriorated and everything got the better of me. Then on November 18th, I jumped in front of a train in an attempt to commit suicide. I hit off the train and I was flying to the side of the tracks and I remember sort of being in autopilot and walking back from the bridge with my mind sort of spinning like an empty record and there was nothing really going on. The police then picked me up and I was covered in mud and I was taken home. Because of what happened and I don't blame her for it because it was a lot, my girlfriend left me and I felt completely alone in this world. My sister then the next day in an argument afterwards said that she had wished I had died and that we'd all be better off if I did die and that she hoped that the police arriving was actually them finding a body. She's never apologised for that and it still rings sort of in the back of my mind today. However, now five months later, while the wound is still very much fresh, I've had time to sort of reflect and look at what took me to that place and why I'm here now apart from me clearly being stronger and built different to a train. In reality, it's just I had terrible hand-eye coordination and I, I probably missed it. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm no longer in the first team for hockey. But first, I'm gonna talk a bit about my family and my past. So in 2017, my name was Jack Williamson and I was a part of this sort of classic happy family. I had just left school as deputy head boy and I had received an unconditional offer from the University of St Andrews to study neuroscience. I lived in a six bedroom 18th century farmhouse with two large gardens. My mum was a doctor and my dad was a lawyer. My sisters also attended the same private school that I did, that I had just left. We had three dogs, two cars. We, we were by no standards rich, but we were doing fairly well. I had my grandparents, who I would see every Sunday for a family roast, and at the end we'd all go home. It's now 2021, and my name is now Jack Malone. I took my mother's name after my dad abandoned my family. My sister Jamie has just left hospital after three years after she was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. While in hospital, I had to visit her in case she didn't survive the night. She's since survived heart attacks, intestinal problems, and she's still standing to this day and she's my, my absolute hero. My mum is now a full-time carer for her and can no longer work. She is now on benefits and she receives meals from a charity every day. As I said, my dad left us and he didn't care if Jamie died. He literally refused to send my mum money, food, for Jamie. My other sister had to leave school after it became too much for her as she I was diagnosed with autism. I no longer speak to my grandparents after they turned their backs on my mum when she went to them for help as she was suicidal. I remember coming home one night in my third year and my mum was crying on my shoulder telling me that she wanted to kill herself and that she had no help. My dad also informed me that he wouldn't care if he lost me and that I had ruined his life and that I was a mistake. So I lost that family, that 2017 classic family. And for me, I felt that a huge pressure to remain strong and to keep my family up. On top of that, I was also at uni. I was paying rent, I was cooking, I was dealing with essay stresses and I was sort of dealing with that whole process of becoming an adult and my own person. So last year, I talked about all those issues and I explained that how I got through all of them was via distractions and sort of being that very busy non-stop guy that a lot of people know me as. However, with the pandemic, I lost all of that. I remember waking up in August of 2020, sort of being tired and exhausted and 
not knowing why and everyone who knows me knows that I'm full of energy and this was completely different. You know, I, I usually wake up and I'm ready to go. Some people were telling me that I just needed to find something to occupy myself with and I needed to man up and everyone was struggling right now. Unfortunately, it did keep on getting worse and the fact that I lived in Scotland and it would get dark at 3pm did no favours. And then, of course, with my final year of university and doing dissertation, deadlines just built up, built up, and they sort of dragged me under. All while my girlfriend at the time was in another country miles and miles away from me. I felt completely alone. I felt as if there was no one else there for me. And I also felt that I couldn't turn to my family as they needed me to be the strong one and the one that they relied on. I am, after all, the only one going to university and I'm the only one that doesn't have a mental disability. And I just thought if I went and begged them for help, it would just be another pain and I'd be another problem. So after seeing my girlfriend at the time, when I flew out to see her and then coming back and having to isolate alone in my room for two weeks, I didn't feel better. And I had a massive anxiety attack where I thought if I left now and didn't exist, no one would care. No one would miss Jack Malone. And my mum begged me saying that she would and sh that she w wants me and in all honesty I know that she was trying to show that she cares for me but all it made me feel was more alone. And it, it was because in my mind I thought my mum has to say that, my mum has to say that she would miss me. I snuck out of my house while my mum was phoning NHS 24 and I walked to the bridge behind my house in the middle of that field and I remember I watched I watched two trains go by and then I just switched off and I jumped when I saw the third. Following what had happened, my girlfriend ended things with me and I, I don't blame her for that and I hold it nothing against her. It was unfair for me to expect help from her for something as big and as serious as depression and suicidal thoughts. But what shocked me was the support from my friends. All these people I'd never considered came to aid me. Ned. A guy that I just drank with occasionally and only knew from doing a play together ended up staying with me for a week and I now hang out with him every day. Unfortunately, he's now going to be an uncle to my kids. Reed, a guy that I met on my course and I worked out with occasionally, came down from St Andrews and stayed with me and watched football with me. And we're now looking to go to medical school together. Grace, a girl that I just coached at hockey and I only really knew through my ex now texted me every day and we would send each other memes and we'd always FaceTime. And she's now probably going to be my best man at my wedding, if society allows it. <laughs> I then have Xavi, a, a guy who I just played hockey with and was in my team, drove me to my first intensive care meeting and he sat in the car for over an hour waiting. He's now probably going to have to drive me to the rest of my doctor's appointments for the rest of his life. And there's many more people who I never realised cared for me and came to talk to me and came to be there for me. All of you kept me alive and kept me here today, five months later. But finally, Fergus, someone I hadn't talked to since I was 10. A friend from when I was a child randomly messaged me in November, unknowingly what happened to me, inviting me to try something called CrossFit. Now, if you don't know what CrossFit is, it's basically torture of weights and I absolutely love it. And I saw him every day until the next lockdown and then when we went into lockdown, we FaceTimed every day and we'd work out twice a day together. And I sort of rekindled that friendship that I thought was lost, just completely out of the blue. But more important than working out and working on me, he showed me this sort of new kind of love. And it was a love for someone as a brother who has no relation to you whatsoever. I'm standing here now saying I'd do anything for Fergus and I know he would do the same for me. But he's not family. But I'm here to say like, why does that matter? This whole thing made me think that family isn't everything. While my family may have fallen apart and I don't have that strong pack to sort of fall back on, I realise I have something better and that's my friends. While my mum and my sister Jamie I love more than anything, I see them also as my friends more than just family. And I, that might be embarrassing, I know, to say that my mum and my sister are my friends, but I just want to get across this. Can we normalise the idea that families aren't perfect? If you do have toxic members in your family, don't overlook it just because they're blood. 
My dad would have done nothing for me in November. And I know that. But all my friends did something more than anything I could have asked for. Family isn't everything. And your friends are really who you are. If you ever feel worthless, just think of those friends who love you as they don't have to. Normalize telling your friends that you love them as they'll probably do more for you than anyone in your family. Appreciate them. I love my imperfect family and while there'd be things I wish didn't happen, I wouldn't change it. But I also love with the same passion all those friends who aren't related to me. To conclude, the saying blood is thicker than water is often misunderstood. While we take it to mean familial bonds are stronger than friendships, there have been many arguments to mean that blood refers to blood brothers and the water is that of the womb. So it actually means those friendships you manifest in life are stronger than those you are connected to by birth. In Arabic, the saying is actually blood is thicker than milk, with milk referring to the milk of the breast, which again means those brothers you see bleed, those brothers that you suffer with, and those brothers who are there for when you're suffering, i.e. blood brothers, are stronger than those who shared the same milk as you. For me, I love some of my family, and I always love some of my family. But this whole experience, November 18th, the pandemic, has shown me that I also love my friends, and I'm lucky for them to love me too.